All right, thank you so much. Okay. So welcome today's um today's forecast is on remote work tools. We looked into in the very first place, we looked into uh three real world jobs that you will have to take up, and then we went into peer mentoring, that means collaboration, um, you know, in different ways, and also mentoring at the same time. And now we are going to remote work tools as a bit of introduction on why we are we, we've decided to go with the content that we are going we are going with now because careers it's a very broad kind of subject that has a lot of concept into it so why have we decided to go with these specific topics it's because we want to prepare everyone on the time you get to learn the certain jobs what kind of characteristics you should be having, what kind of things you should be ready for, um, and what kind of behaviors you should be taking there. Just it, It's just to get yourself ready before going into those workspaces in the very first month. That, 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 that's what we are going to be focusing about. And then later in the other months, pro, um, month three, month four, month six, that's when we will be focusing on exactly then how to land those jobs that we've been talking about. So on today's focus, we are into remote work tools. Uh, we've been working remotely, uh, all of us. We are, most of you are into the same countries, but we have people who are in different other countries like Kenya. We have others in Ethiopia. We have others, uh, in Kigali, just like me, and we have others in Germany. We have, you know, different nationalities and different countries coming up here, and we are ready to, uh, we are able to serve on the same mission, have the same focus every day, and it's what we call remote work specifically. But I want to understand specifically uh, when someone tells you that they will be working remotely or they've been learning something remotely what comes to your mind what comes to your mind what do you how do you define it yourself anyone who wants to go first anyone who can open their mic and share with us i will repeat the question specifically what comes to your mind when you hear the term remote work or someone telling you I'll be working remotely. Okay, someone said freedom of time and space, absolutely. And Basila said not at the office, yes. AI said Zoom and Google meeting, absolutely. Mela said working from far, absolutely as well working from home yes mm -hmm. finally say by managing your own time since you won't be directed by management yes um also multiple roles or multiple jobs like you are able to work on multiple responsibilities jobs or anything else at the same time yes Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks everyone for sharing. However, um, actually, something I liked about I like about remote work is that it has gone beyond um, it defining geographics. Like, let's say you are here, I'm here in Rwanda and working for um, a company whose main headquarters is in Ethiopia. You know, it has gone far from that. There are so many people who are in the same country, but the management prefers to keep it remote just because there are so many different benefits and uh, pros that comes with it. Others said managing... Um, Uh, someone say managing your own time since you won't be directed my management, but I'm telling you at the end of the day, you have to hit the deadlines. If the deadline is like 10 UTC and you know, you have to manage your time accordingly. Yes, but you are expected to be working like even to be online. Someone said private office. Yes. I've been working remotely for 
four years now. And yes, I have my private office. This is my space where I'm seated. I had to set it in my house, but sometimes I also join other workspaces outside my house where other remote workers work from. I'm telling you, it's the amazing thing. Well, they say it, are we near, near, being nearby my family? Yes, absolutely. Being a boss of myself, mostly, I'm telling you, yeah, 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 that's the thing. Thanks everyone for sharing. And absolutely, everything about that means remote work. You had it right. So by definition, remote work is a, a work arrangement where employees perform their job tasks and responsibilities from a location other than the traditional office, often using technology to connect and collaborate. You know, like how we've been, been able to be connecting and working on the same focus, working on the same challenges, and communicating, just having the same focus and same vision on what we are doing, but still, we are not in the same traditional space as we used to do. So some people be like, why remote work? Because I know so many, there are many people who support the idea of working remotely or even learning remotely, but there are also so many others who are like, no, this is not something. If I was a CEO, this is not something I can adapt, you know, but why remote work? Why is it good and why should, um, wh why should it be the future of work? Simply, it's because it really improves work-life balance. Like someone who said, I'll be able to work near my family. That's very true. And then global talent uh, pool access, like you are not able to just work, um, you know, with just people who are based, let's say if the company is based in, in Kigali, you are able to go far from that limit, you know, to know work, um, just with people who are based in Kigali, Rwanda, but also people who are based around the world. And I'm telling you, bringing diversity into your company, it brings so much uh, productivity, so much creativity, because you are bringing people who have different kind of life experiences. And we get the ideas of creativity and the ideas of how we can make much more revenue, according to the stories we hear uh, from those other people who live um, you know, into other different kind of cultures. And then reduced commute stress. I'm super happy, actually, I get to not commute anymore. Um, I, I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm telling you, sometimes it can be stressful. Sometimes it can be um, uh, not, not, not okay to adapt to, you know, so when you have less time of commuting, going to work, it's also something which is super nice. And then engaging visuals, highlighting. Okay. But how does it work specifically? There are four key categories of tools that make remote work efficient. Like how do we make it work? How do we get to work from different locations by be able to deliver on time and be able to be creative be able just to deliver as expected is first by using tools that helps us to communicate others that help us to co collaborate and then project management and then time management so you imagine these all categories as building blocks of your digital workspaces you should be having at least the four at least the four for you to be able to perform successfully as a remote worker. Examples of remote work tools, some of them, these are like some of them, there are so many, so many tools that are compatible to these ones, but these are the most common ones and really highly used. For communication, most of people use Slack. Most people use Slack. Um, Slack has become like our virtual offices. That's where we receive our announcements. That's where we collaborate from, that's where we have our fun from, you know, community into community building sessions, for example. That's where we receive all resources we need to perform our work. Like Slack is mainly the virtual office for any remote work environment. And then when we talk about collaboration, many, many companies use Notion. 
uh notion is really easy to navigate for so many people easy to understand like the ux is super on top so this is like a digital workspace for seamless teamwork and then for project management we have trello and trello is specifically your project's command center like this is where we perform project management anything you have to do for instance, if you are heading a certain department and there are different projects you have to be running at the same time, Trello is the best, not like marketing them, but so many companies use Trello when it comes to their project management. And then time management, we have Google Calendar almost used by everyone. It's the keeper of our schedules. Is the keeper of our schedules. And I believe we've been performing through Slack. So you know Slack, we've been performing through Notion. That's where we get our weekly schedule, the one that always wrote us shares. And then time management, we've been using Google Calendar, especially, um, let's say, to the careers, um, to the careers exercises that happened in week one. I believe everyone, or almost everyone, you were using Google Calendar just to schedule uh, your peer um, meeting for the challenge. So let's talk about how we see uh, we are progressing with remote work. It's going to come with flexible work arrangement, flexibility. When you talk about the future of remote work, everyone tells you, I'm looking for the flexibility. I'm looking for the flexibility of how I can arrange my work. I know I have deliverables, but let's say if I have something that I need to deliver on Wednesday, I can probably, I'm not a morning person to wake up early and work on it. I can better work during night. So I'm able to go back and work on that certain project in my own time. And then advanced collaboration technologies, which is super amazing to really experience. And then remote work impact on traditional office setups absolutely this is going to be especially to employers it's, it's going to help them with costs uh, minimization and you know everything they spend when it comes to traditional offices remote work is really deleting that completely so that was like a bit of introduction about remote work the benefits uh why people choose to work be working remotely and i'm happy that most of everyone here can relate it, you know we, we talked about the positive thing about it there are some other people find the negative part but i'm telling you uh the bigger percentage goes with uh the pros about remote work and um we are preparing ourselves to be able to we be working in that kind of environment, especially people like us at Ten Academy who are uh, developing ourselves into tech individuals. Most of the tech individuals get to work remotely because you know mostly needed at the office to make some daily presentation about something. Like you know, many people who are working remotely, they are tech individuals. So that's why we even prepare ourselves. Like when we get into this kind of setup or environment how will we be able to navigate it so let's go um straight someone said chero is like jira yes it's also like click up if you know it um yeah absolutely so let's go through the challenge that we have about tools for remote work before we proceed is everything clear can i get some thumbs up okay 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 if you have any question please feel free to open your mic and stop me or even type it in the chat box so we have a task about um tools for remote work you know the tools we were talking about specifically in a remote work setup where you are not physically talking to people you just have to deliver most of the time and you have to deliver through the tools that you that the company uses when it comes to collaboration or project management so that's why we mostly focus on the kind of tools and us getting from familiar with them uh, so that we get ready for the time we get into the setup into that environment so we have the challenge the first handing um 
which is also the final one. It's going to be on Saturday, 23rd. Of course, 8 p.m. UTC as usual. The challenge that by explaining, again, what is remote work, uh, what is onboarding, the challenge is going to be about onboarding. So let's go through it. When we talk about onboarding in a remote uh, setup, the term onboarding describes the procedures used to integrate new hires and employees into the company. In addition to learning about the organization structure, culture, vision, mission, and values, it also contains activities that help new hires complete the first new hire orientation. So imagine it like this. You just joined a startup and you are the new data scientist um, and they tell you you are going to be heading the product, the, the department. And you are totally new, but um, you get to be told by your manager that you will be, that they are going to be hiring more junior data scientists. So how do you get to onboard them? How do you get to put them um, up and running and be able to use the company tools, any collaboration tools that you use, any project management tools? The assignment is going to be about this. Because after you introducing them to the culture, to the vision and mission, you have to also tell, show them uh, different, probably if it's a software company, give them a company tour, uh, about the software that you use, or probably even take them through the current projects that are currently ongoing and tell them about the deliverables. So what kind of tools uh, do we use when we are doing onboarding? Um, the next session talks about why remote work. We already talked about this. So we are going to be focusing on the tools that we use, which is Google Calendar, Slack, Notion, and Trello, some of the famous one. Again, it explains a bit about um, every, every tool like we highlighted before. So let's go to the background specifically of the exercise. So imagine your company has moved to a different location and your team manager had tasked you with setting up the office workflow for tools for remote work for any new hires that will be coming. This is to assist um, and onboard the new colleagues who have not used those kind of tools before. And in order to do this, you will need to know how to use a number of different tools, Slack, Notion, Google Calendar, and Trello. So exercise number one, you are going to imagine that Pascaline and Abdullah here are the new members joining the team. Pascaline and Abdullahi are the new members being mentioned here. And on Google Calendar, you are going to access your Google Calendar. Of course, you don't need to create an account because you already have a Gmail. So you are going to figure out how to find a Google Calendar there and create a new calendar specifically for the onboarding meeting. Pascaline and Abdullahi, this should be the title. Then schedule a weekly check-in meeting and invite new team members. Add important description about what the meeting will be about in general. You know, add your description about the onboarding. What, what are we going to be covering in every um, meeting that we're going to be having? Um, set up reminders for that weekly team meeting. You know, reminders, that means you want us to be receiving a notification probably before 30 minutes of every meeting or even 10 minutes, however you like, to set up a reminder for that weekly team meeting and then take a screenshot after you are done with everything. I will show you the kind of screenshot you have to take. Let me access my Google Calendar. <clears throat> so this is not the screenshot you will be taking, not this one. Just come inside here. Okay, okay, come inside here, click edit, and then take this, like after you've done your work, take this screenshot. This is the one we want, because we'll be seeing the time you scheduled, the title, the guests, the description, everything. Okay, coming back. That's about Google Calendar. Take a screenshot after you are done with the task. Then on Slack, 
you are going to be creating a new Slack workspace named onboarding new, member, new members and create four new channels in addition to the ones which Slack auto creates. Like when you create an account, Slack gives you some channels to start with. So you have to ignore those and start other four new channels according to just name them however you want, according to what you think should be in the onboarding. And then send Pascaline and Abdullahi an invite link, inviting them to join the Slack workspace. We will be sharing with you our emails down here. Then post a welcome message into the channel, introducing the purpose of the Slack workspace and its objectives. Um, to give you some hints, when you are sending a welcome message, you make sure that it's very detailed as possible. You create, for instance, I will give you one hint. You created four different channels. So when you are sending a welcome message, you ensure that you are even describing what those four new channels are going to be for. Like, don't just send in a welcome to this Slack. Just make it as detailed as possible. And then initiate a discussion about our experience so far in your company and ask for their input. Then take a screenshot of the Slack channel with the introduction message and the discussion visible. That's about Slack. Then on Notion, you are going to set up um, a board in Notion using Kanban format. Kanban format. Make sure you pay attention here. On this task board, you should list 10 key exercises you have completed for the training at Sen Academy in week one, along with the key feedback you have received with the tutors. I'll go through this point again. On Notion, you are going to set up a task board in Notion using Kanban format. Look for what, that, what this means. And then on this task board, you will be listing 10 key exercises you have completed for the training at Ten Academy in week one. If there are 10, yes. If there are less, it's all right. Just list, all, list the minimum 10 key exercises you have completed in week one. That means the previous week, along with the key feedbacks you received on every exercises from your tutors. Then link your Notion task board to the Slack workspace you have created. You can do this using Slack app directory. Please choose the channel that your tutor has joined to link your Notion account to. When you are done, again, link your Notion task board to the Slack workspaces, the one that the new members, me and Abdullahi, has joined. And then using your Notion account, create a public page for the task view and provide the link into the Slack channel. To provide a little bit of explanation about what a public page means, it's like this page where we get to see our schedule. So like Rhodes worked on it and then ensured that it's public. Everyone can be able to see it. And what she does, if she did was to just give us um, the link on Slack and we were able to access that. Then on Trello, you are going to create a new Trello board named onboarding process. This is like a project called onboarding process. Then you are going to set up columns on the board <clears throat> written to do in progress review and completed. Then after that, you create task cards, task cards for the onboarding week and tasks in to do column and then add us in the to-do column. Mm, sorry, it's repeated twice. No, I should put a full stop here. Okay. So you are going to create task cards for the onboarding week and task and add tasks in the to-do column specifically. We have four different columns here. So add some tasks in the to-do column according to how you imagine should be the tasks for the onboarding, you know? And then in your to-do column, you should have three different tasks. Some of them should be introduction to the company and the job description, company platform tour, 
and introduction to current projects. You can keep these tasks or you can even create other ones, but we prefer that you keep the three so that we have the uniformity in um, the task that has been created. And then you have to move one task to in progress column. If, after adding these on to do column, move one of the three into the progress column and then move another one into the review column. After you are done doing this, also take a screenshot of the Trello board with the tasks visible. Then after completing those tasks on Google Calendar, Slack and Notion, create a Google Slides. Like we have, we have took so many different screenshots and everything. So we are going to be um, creating a Google Slides that's a PPT online um, with the guidance on how you did each step on each of those platforms and other final results, screenshot, the ones you took after the every task at the end of the guide. The, the slides for this task should be max six slides maximum. Again, after completing all those tasks, you should create a Google slide with the guidance on how you did each step. For instance, for you to access Trello, you are going to be giving us steps on how you access Trello, how you created a new board, like a guide uh, for people who does, um, now I was going to give a technical example that I'm not confident about. <laughs> But yeah, like a user guide, for instance, for new members like Pascaline and Abdullahi who are joining, they can be able to use your guide to be able to set up the same thing you set up into all these platforms. I hope that is much clear. And then the Google Slides title should be guidance on remote work. This and the slides should be simple, clean and professional. Bullet points are fine. Actually, they are more readable. And the goal would be for these slides to be ready to use in real world environment. If you had new team members joining you and you need them to use all these kind of tools, you can you share them your guide and they will be able to follow it and set up their workspaces into all, all those platforms and be able to work successfully. That's the question. And then exercise number two, you are going to create a step-by-step -step showing your new members how to embed a new task in your Notion Kanban board. So many companies use these um, Kanban boards, especially when uh, doing task management or task planning. So you are going to look for or search for or learn how do we get to embed a new task in a Notion Kanban board. And after you've learned and you've practiced it, you are going to be moving it to the backload, backlog and to active and then to complete. And then you will create a guide about how you created this Kanban board and did all the following tasks into a Google slide you created. So after this slide here, for much more clarification, the first exercise slides should be six slides maximum. After you are done with the six slides and the exercise number one, create other slides below that, like it should be in the same documents. Cre create other slides down that, three slides maximum, with this guide, exercise two guide. And then exercise number three, it should be a brief guide explanation showing new members how to add new members on their workspace on Slack. And then after you have worked on your guides, everything is ready. You add the guide into the Google slides, again, below the ones from exercise number one and exercise number two, you created and the maximum slides should be just one. Just one slide with this explanation on exercise number three. Bonus points, bonus points, provide a short guide on how to embed apps into Notion, such as Google, Figma, or even YouTube, focusing on those that you think will be useful to 10 Academy training.
believe that's much clear. So for any kind of support or any kind of um, everything else, any clarifications you need, you can be reach out to me or apply on Slack. Submission should be on text as usual. And the marking rubric, we are going to be looking at the quality of writing. How good is your, um, is your guide written? Is it easy to read? Is it written on a professional tone? Is it something, you know, that new members can read and be able to get the information very fast and, you know, it sounds very professional. And then the quality of documentation, has the author written a concise plan with all relevant information included? And also, have you included any extraneous information to any points that you feel like needs more clarification? And then the quality of execution, have you followed instructions on every task, on every exercise given? So why do we need uh, this kind of exercise? This exercise will be preparing us for remote work as we will be having to create realistic onboarding solutions for possible future colleagues who have never worked remotely before. And as more and more people start shifting to remote work, like now remote work is becoming the future of work. It's more important that we understand the most common remote tools, how they work and how to easily explain them to the you their uses to others that is it about the remote what the tools for remote work challenge for questions uh AI said are we using trello in my document is calendly AI which document are you referring to Oh, thank you. Uh, I got the new the new one from Google Drive. Okay. I, I just found it. All right, oh, thanks. Okay. Great. Um, Abraham said, so we prepare a guide presentation that is 10 slides long. You got it right. Yes. And that includes all the three exercises. Uh, any other questions? Hussein said, do we need to have finished the task to include it in the board? In the board. Hussein, uh, can you open your mic and explain further? I'm not sure if, you, if I'm getting your question. Mm -hmm. Do we need to have finished the task to include in the board? I mean, to use last week tasks and feedbacks. Yes, Hussein. You should have finished it unless you didn't, but you still received the feedbacks from your tutor. Please add it there. All right, all right. Um, anyone else? Are all the procedures in the free versions of the tools? Yes, absolutely. You will be able to create them for free and you'll be able to follow the procedures for free. Other questions? We have enough time. Okay, or is everything clear or there is even a point that you want me to repeat? All good on my side. Okay, Kerod. Ekram said, okay.
Okay, any other question? Any other question, please? Or oh, can we call it a day? Are we good? Oh, Hussein said, so 10 from all 18 previous tasks. What do you mean, Hussein? Like from week zero, week one, and week two? Or just week one? No, they should be from week one. Uh, allow me, Amina, to check something. There are only 18 exercises from week zero and week one, and eight exercises from last week that I got from 10X. Uh, yeah, I'm checking that Hussein on 10X. Oh yeah, I got the number. Uh, yeah, it should be eight. I can see that it should be eight. Oh, we're still looking here. Um, Okay, so we will be uh, we'll be doing seven. We'll be doing seven maximum. I'm changing that into the exercise on notion. Okay, so you will be listing seven key exercises from uh, the maximum seven or eight submissions that happened last week, and you will be also listing the key feedbacks you received. Um, on all um on all those kind of exercises so we will be doing seven maximum hussein okay uh abram said um no it should be from week one only biruk Abram said, we didn't get much feedback, though. List the one that you received feedbacks on. It's very OK. Aya, you raised the hand. Yes? Yeah, I was, I was going to ask the same question. We only got uh, on the technical, I mean, yeah, on the technical side. Mm -hmm. the feedbacks. On the non-technical yeah, on, on non ones, also, please expect I to mean, receive the feedbacks uh, by Wednesday. That means tomorrow. All right. Thanks. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Abraham, everything okay? Test five. Okay, great. Great. Thanks everyone for joining. Let's meet in like uh, 43 minutes in our very loved CBS. I can't wait to have some relaxing time and fun time with you all in a few. Have a great afternoon.